So welcome, here we are, we're talking and we're talking today about movement, my absolute most favourite subject to talk about, moving. Uh, and it's my favourite thing to do actually as well. <laughs> Uh, I'm here today with Nikki Chamberlain, and Nikki, I know for a fact, enjoys moving also. Welcome, Nikki. Hi, Philippa. It's good to chat to you again. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've both got ourselves on our favourite topic today, so it should be uh, it should be fun. Hopefully, we can uh, hopefully we can keep it to about half an hour. We we could probably talk all day about movement. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the the danger, isn't it? Get us two together. Uh, so, you know, movement, what is it? Why does it matter? What should we be doing? Uh, whose job is it uh, to, to be moving more? Uh, lots of lots of matter for debate today, but we're going to start with the hot topic of why? Why should we be moving more? And at the moment, uh, you know that I've been focusing on mental health, moving for mental health, improving mental health. Uh, but clearly that is, uh, that's only a piece of the puzzle. And actually, you know, what we know is these things are so interlinked, the mental health, the physical health, uh, and our overall health, that it's really difficult to separate the two. And, uh, and so what we know is that movement features in just about every aspect of wellness, um, and so, yeah, we're 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 in we're in a job forever more, I reckon, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately, it, there's a very simple answer to it in terms of why we should be moving more, because because quite simply, it's good for our health. Mm. It's good for our health. It's good for our wellness. It's good for our well-being. Um, and um, I think there's kind of there's three key areas. I mean. That you can look at around this the first one that everybody thinks around generally is the physical health mm. people think about using it for fitness purposes and um, to keep themselves active um you know maybe for um controlling weight gain managing weight gain that kind of thing mm. um but the other another area that you've touched on obviously is mental health mm. um and you know there's a lot of studies out there that show um that it it, it is helpful in reducing um anxiety depression sadness low moods mm. um it can definitely help lift all of that um but then there's also cognitive health mm. which very mm. often is not really thought about or not really considered yeah but you yeah. know in terms of the the effect that it has on your brain and the the the, the chemicals that it, it transports around your body mm. um it can help with thinking it can help with creativity. Mm. Um, all, all of those kind of things can really benefit from mm. just being more active and moving more. Yeah, and I mean, this is really important. Um, you know, the idea that we're productive du during the day um, is, you know, we've, we're kind of prone to fluctuations, aren't we? And so... You, you, you know, if you're sitting at a desk for eight hours on end without moving, invariably, you, you know, you, your productivity is going to go into a decline because this lack of blood flow to the brain, um, we're not stimulating the blood flow. And so definitely physical activity, um, particularly some cardiovascular activity that gets your heart pumping or some fairly, uh, you know, uh, invigorating resistance exercises is going to increase the circulation, increase this uh, cognition actually for about two hours afterwards. So it's, it's uh, got its own rewards to do these things, uh, you know, through the day, not just to think of it as something we do in the evening after we finish work, but to actually have that embedded through the day, actually, I think uh, that can improve our performance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an interesting fact that, isn't it? You know, that you get this, you get this cognitive benefit um, for up to two hours after exercise mm. um, or movement, which I think, um, you know, it, it it's it really sort of promotes the reason why you should think about perhaps think about the timing of when you do things. Mm. You know, particularly 
you know you can you can use it to improve your performance in a work environment for example and if you were to do some movement in the morning before you go into work or start your work and, and use that to kind of get the benefit from the morning and then make sure that you use some time in your lunch break to also get some movement mm -hmm. it's not a case of like driving into work parking up in the car park walking straight to your desk sitting mm -hmm. down at your desk all morning but kind of do something in the morning and then at lunchtime, don't just take yourself off to the canteen and sit there and eat your lunch and then take yourself back to your desk, but try and use those times to do something. Mm. It can actually help improve your performance at work. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely experienced this, uh, you know, the mo movement in the morning before, uh, before I set off to do whatever I'm doing, even if that is moving. <laughs> As it goes I uh, yeah just get out I, I've been doing the walk to work even though I've not been going out of the house so I just go out go around and come back uh, you know and I feel I feel so much more alive when I do that I, I think that's the thing you know Dr Chatterjee said in his new book we, we are human mammals we're intended to move we we feel alive when we do these things and absolutely i i definitely get that benefit yeah i mean so much of it is is, is kind of rooted in our evolution in our history though isn't it i was either listening to something or reading something over the last couple of days um where it was talking about the benefits that we get from movement um and the um the chemicals that the body produces mm. it goes back to our kind of caveman times oh, when yes. it was it was it was all around movement movement then was usually either to go find food or to run away from something that was going to cause us yeah. harm yeah, yeah so yeah. the whole fight or flight thing so essentially in both of those situations we needed our brains to be functioning really well and thinking really clearly so that we could respond quickly and think clearly about what we needed to do. So that that kind of hasn't changed. That's where it's come from. And that's the reason why we still get kind of benefits. Yeah, that's it. You improve cognitive performance in conjunction with uh, physical exertion. I, do you know what, Nikki? Either I wrote that or we've both been reading the same thing <laughs> this week. But yeah, it was fascinating because you, you you don't think of that really, that, that you would need to think while you were running. But actually, yeah, if you were running to chase something for your dinner or running away from something, thinking would really come in handy at that point. So, uh, so yeah, and, and of course, the, uh, the euphoria that we can get from... Uh, from exercise, the uh, you know the endogenous opioids, the endogenous cannabinoids that are released, uh, you know the, the the mental effects of those chemicals is is what keeps those of us who who do it doing it because we kind of get hooked on that. Yeah, I mean it's mood lifting, isn't it? You know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it it makes you feel happy it makes you feel like you've got a sense of achievement it makes mm -hmm. you feel like you you know it gives you some reward for, mm -hmm. for for what you've done um you know all of those things help lift your mood mm. and improve you know general happiness yeah definitely and uh yeah so so that effect on the mental well-being uh, also, it, it confidence can be enhanced, you know, and, and so something that when you're in the middle of your menopause, you can be slightly lacking in uh, <clears throat> a confidence boost, uh, confidence because of the biochemical changes, but also because of uh, feeling like your body's good for something, you know, it, it's performing, it's, uh, it's, it's doing its job. Uh, so, it, you know, it's so, so uh, so many benefits from moving that uh, really, you know, there's so many things that we stand to gain from doing it. And really, th this is why everybody who isn't already, it, you know, it would be so awesome for those people to experience this, the benefits. And, uh, and so, you know, is, is, do we have a preference? What, what kinds of things do you think we should be doing? Well, I mean, I think following on from, from what we've just been talking about, the most important thing around exercise is the thing that you enjoy the most. Um, it's interesting. I mean, um, I'm a runner um, mm -hmm. and, you know, I could talk to people all day about running and very often do. 
um, bore people senseless about it. Um, and I do feel sometimes that um, some people are reluctant to engage too much in kind of conversations with me around movement and exercise because they automatically think that I'm just going to try and tell them that they should go running just because it's my thing and it's what I do. Yeah. Um, but it is my thing. It's what I do. It's what I enjoy. But aside from that, one thing that I advocate with anyone that I talk to is do the thing that you enjoy the most because consistency is the most important thing mm. and enjoying it is the most important thing and if you're mm. trying to force yourself into doing something that you don't enjoy then it's it's, yeah. it's not going to happen no I, I mean this is it it's, it does have to be something you love doing and uh, and it doesn't have to be something that you think of as exercise either is the thing you know uh just gardening or uh getting out in the fresh air definitely walking is is just so many benefits the air the the sunlight uh there's you're not get you're never going to get the same amount of uh light stimulation indoors as you would do outdoors even on a cloudy day we're getting more um oh, i can't remember the name of the the actual measurement of light but anyway uh, that's it lumens yes so uh, <laughs> you're going to get more lumens outside than you ever would inside uh so yeah if you you know if it's something you can do outside then definitely go and do it outside and of course you know i'm pilates and yoga mad uh and i, I do it all day and quite often i do but um but you know we we each to their own and and it's but do try things as well you know i've said that before try things tai chi dancing oh my gosh dancing so good for the soul i, I think throw, put on the music dance dance you sing dance and let it all hang out and it's so so beneficial uh so but the thing i suppose the other thing is to make it something that's regular not just uh you know once every blue moon uh oh and of course what did we say resistance training yeah i, I mean there's there's two different types of, of things that you can do around movement and exercise really aren't there there's one which is kind of the cardio aerobic which i think is what a lot of people tend to think about mm. that tends to be the off-putting one people think that they've got to um very often you know it's thought that you've got to push yourself to the absolute limit Mm. Um, which actually is not necessarily the case. Um, really? So, and that can often put people off and make mm. them think, oh, you know, I've not got the energy, I don't feel like it, it's going to be mm. too hard. Um, but there's also um, strength or resistance type activity, mm. which is what helps strengthen your muscles and helps strengthen your bones. Mm. Um, and that is just just as important, equally important. Hmm. And again, uh, you know, with strength training, you get the uh, long after effects in terms of the increase in the metabolic drive, but also, um, you know, the more muscle, the more lean muscle tissue we have, the more that drives uh, metabolism, uh, you know, if that's a concern. So, uh, you know, in resistance training, it really, you do really get a buzz from doing that. You definitely get a buzz from doing that. Yeah, and it's particularly key, actually, the older that we get. So we obviously, we you start to lose, I think your muscle mass peaks somewhere in your 30s from something like that, and it's kind of downhill all the way from your, from your 30s <laughs> onwards. But particularly if we're talking about women um, mm -hmm. and sort of around in and around the menopause, mm -hmm. um, at that point, your muscle mass really does start to see significant decreases it's a little bit later for men so for women i think it significantly starts to decrease around the menopause at 50 i think men it significantly starts to decrease around 60 and mm. we start to see the real big drop-offs um but yeah. what what resistance and strength work can do and it only needs to be body weight exercises so you know resistance with a resistance band or body weight exercises around strength it's not about having to go and lift weights in the gym or anything like that mm -hmm can just help slow down some of that muscle mass decline um, and just you know it keeps you stronger um, mm -hmm. it helps with balance it helps with keeping you stronger it can prevent 
trips and falls and things like mm. that that you know can happen as you as you you move into the older part of life well that's right so definitely as with the passage of time uh having stronger muscles is going to stand you in good stead there's no doubt about that um yeah uh, you know and we uh we as menopausal women <laughs> speak to that uh you you know the clock ticking and uh the loss of estrogen affecting the uh you know the muscle tissue it, you're actually working to to stay stand still sometimes you know uh to prevent this loss uh, balance falling over is is so key that we you know stay on our feet and don't fall over and then if you do and you happen to be padded out with muscle then you're less likely to hurt yourself so uh yeah definitely strength strength training i think is something that i've been concentrating on over the last uh, couple of years and uh and i and i'm very passionate that we should be working to retain muscle mass uh you know as much as we possibly can now you know and it doesn't like you say it doesn't have to be in the gym even but i do i do i'm looking because i had a dumbbell right next to me but so then i moved it um i do advocate you know some resistance the bands i like i love bands and i use rubber bands all the time in my sessions but uh light hand weights if you've got something by the kettle and uh, and you go and put the kettle on and lift it up 10 times you know, that's resistance training, isn't it? Well, I mean, th that's the beauty of it. I, I'm not sure how you replicate the resistance bands quite so easily, but certainly from a weights perspective, you know, you don't need to have kind of the dumbbells or the light hand weights, tins of beans or bottles of water or, you know, those kind of things that you find, you know, in everyday life or, you know, even like you say, if you fill the kettle and you're lifting that up, all of those things will count. Well, I didn't um, mean lift the kettle. I meant lift the dumbbell while the kettle's boiling. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> just the kettle would work just as well. Well, I suppose, as long as it's not too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't meaning kind of bench press the kettle or anything like that while it was, while it was boiling. Yeah, um, no. I mean, you can keep a, keep a resistance band in your fruit bowl. I've got one. In, in some of the pictures of me, there's one in my fruit bowl. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, keep these things handy. The kitchen is the heart of the home. Uh, lots of people find themselves in the kitchen on a regular basis. And so I think this is a really good way of embedding movement into your day. Uh, make it make it easy to do, convenient. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, in terms of how you can you can how you can make it a daily habit, integrating it into your life is mm -hmm. is usually the first place to start. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once you've done that, it becomes more of a habit. But, you know, things like um, walk to the shops sometimes, if you're assuming it's not, you know, a million miles away, but, but walk to the shops instead of taking the car. Um, walk the kids to school mm -hmm. instead of dropping them off in the car. Um, or even once you get back to, to working in the office, if, you, if you're not working in the office at the moment, then, you know, use your exercise or your movement as your commute. So walk, run, cycle, you know, there's all sorts of kind of different ways that you can do it from that perspective. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I like, I mean, just make it something that you do to go places uh, is, is going to make all the difference. I know I've always done that as a matter of course. Uh, and if it was a bit too far, then I'd go on my bike and then I got there quicker. Although that was a bit hazardous with shopping on the handlebars. <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah. Then take the rucksack and put the shopping in the rucksack. That's what I do. But, yeah, use it, you know, because that's what we would have been doing, isn't it? You know, using our two feet to get places. And, uh, you, know, and I, you know, I lived in America for a little while. And, uh, and actually... I used to have visitors over from the UK. Everybody was very keen to come and visit me uh, in Colorado, spookily enough. Oh, yeah, we'll come for two weeks to Colorado. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but they always used to say when we were driving around, where are all the people? Because nobody walked anywhere. No, They just got in the cars, you know, 
from the house into the car, the garage door goes up, the electric garage door, and you leave the house. And then you enter back into the house in exactly the same fashion. So it's like, uh, you know, there's no people. You don't see any people walking anywhere. And to be honest, the pavements are not really set up for it, in interestingly. So, uh, you know, that the environment definitely is key. Uh, I remember once going to the crosswalk, trying to cross a busy, uh, call it a dual carriageway, whatever they call it, and uh, turning around and going home again because I really couldn't work out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't been there very long. <laughs> I hadn't been there very long. And I had my two little kids with me, so I wasn't going to risk, like, sprinting across the road. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> it would go it's red okay. then um <laughs> then green and then before you put a foot in the road it would go red again <laughs> I, was like, well, I don't know what to do so i went home it's, it's obviously <laughs> an experience that's lived in your memory it really did but uh but yeah so i mean at least in this country we do we can i can work out how to operate the uh you know the, the button at the traffic <laughs> <laughs> You do get a sufficient amount of time to cross as well. <laughs> oh yeah, that's I could work the button, they just I couldn't work out when to go. <laughs> but, uh, yes. <laughs> but the, so, the other yeah, thing is, of course, I mean we we're, we're talking about movement. Um mm. and it, it doesn't kind of have to be specifically, you know, what people think about exercise. No. So, you know, daily chores, like daily household mm. chores. Mm. Um, you know, the very act of like mowing the lawn. Um, mm. I know that's a task that I absolutely hate to do, but I do, when I do it, I do think to myself, you know, that it's contributing to part of my, my, mm. you know, daily activity yeah. and that sort of, you know, eases, eases things a little bit for me. But if you think about, for example, unloading the dishwasher, mm. so, you know, unloading the dishwasher is, you know, a moderate amount of activity, but you're probably bending and stretching, you're bending down to pick things up, you might be stretching up to put things in a cupboard, mm. all those sorts of things count. Yeah, absolutely. I was just imagining a French and Saunders sketch at that moment. <laughs> It's one I've not seen. <laughs> no, I don't think there is one. I think it was just. Um, in the... <laughs> I see what you, mean. <laughs> you could just. Be... Or was it Victoria Wood? You remember that one she used to do, dressed in the lycra? Yeah, that was a good one. But yeah, no, I mean, I cleaned the kitchen on Saturday, and I I got really into it, so wiping down all the cupboard fronts, and uh, you know, going for it. Um, so you, you can, you were taking the layers off because you're getting hot. So all of these things count. I think, um, you know, absolutely people have been doing lots of chores over lockdown, haven't they? Building, uh, well, uh, painting fences and uh, and gardening. Actually, I've seen quite a few of them in the physio clinic who uh, who went a bit over the top with decorating and, and all that stuff. So... But, you know, so this is the other thing that if you don't do this regularly, your body forgets what it's like to do these things. And then you start, you think you can just go ahead and decorate the whole house. And next thing you know, you are in the physio clinic. So, uh, you know, the idea of prevention better than cure, that's my sort of philosophy, isn't it? And, uh, and so doing these things regularly through our lives means that instead of suddenly one day finding that you can't reach the top shelf or you can't scratch between the shoulder blades or whatever, then the likelihood is that you will preserve the function in the longer term uh, so that when you do finally retire from your job, you can then go and enjoy all the things that you've been waiting to, to enjoy, like golf and whatever else, uh, and not and not uh, find that actually you've stiffened up to the point of... of um, needing a lubricant <laughs> i mean ultimately it's just about being less sedentary isn't it so mm. you know our lives nowadays are so much more sedentary than historically they've ever been mm. um you know we have more you know we we rely more on our cars and, and transportation to get us to places um, and yeah. we're very often less active at home because we're sitting down watching Netflix or watching TV or on social media, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a, a lot of, of kind of leisure activities have become more sedentary and have involved less movement. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we're also 
very often more sedentary at work. So there's, you know, there's a lot more sedentary desk based jobs where people go in, sit down most of the day and don't, you know, think about moving too far away from the chairs. Um, I was uh, I was reading something interesting, actually, that and it reminded me that, uh, you know, back in the 80s, when you used to go to the supermarket, the checkout assistant was standing to scan. And, uh, yeah. that, that you know, back way back, there was a move to take people from being standing in the work to sitting, thinking that that was actually going to be better for them to do their job. And so now all the che you see all the checkout assistants sitting in the work. And, uh, and was that progress? I'm, I'm not so sure it was because, you know, it's like all these things, the balance has shifted in the other way so far now that we're having to think about um, embedding a bit more activity into our working day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just another example of how we have become more sedentary um you know and and ways to break it for example you know if you if you if you're working from home or wherever you are maybe a little bit more difficult in the office but you know if you if you're taking phone calls for example mm. think about every time you take a phone call or you make a phone call stand up or wander around while you're doing that and it just adds that opportunity for a little bit more movement into your day yeah and i mean i think ultimately our health is in, is our job to take care of our, ourselves, you know, and particularly for me being self-employed, um, I don't think I, I don't think I've had a day off work in the last uh, oh gosh, let me think, twenty years. So not a single day. Well, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. No, before my children were born is, is when I think I had last had a day off sick. I got food poisoning, if I remember rightly. <laughs> Sorry, off sick? I thought you just said a day off work. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I've had a day off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I see what you mean. I thought okay. you were punishing yourself. <laughs> no, I meant, sorry. Yeah, I haven't. I don't think I've had a day off sick. Uh you know, even before I worked for myself, working in the NHS, we would always feel so terribly bad if, if we couldn't turn up to, to treat our patients because then our poor colleagues would end up with twice as many people on the list. And, you know, that was not fun. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, getting sick is, is really not an option when you work for yourself, if you can avoid it. Uh, so so I, I think... I need to be looking after myself to be fit and healthy and uh, able to do the work that I do. I need to be fit to do what I do. So I keep fit for that. Um, and not just when I'm doing it, but out with that. Um, I, you know, and that pays dividends ultimately in the end for the, for the individual. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Considering whose responsibility is it? Because I mean, the, the, the first thought that comes to mind is, well, it's the responsibility of the individual. It's, you know, it's your responsibility to, you know, decide what you're going to do, find the time to be able to do it, find the motivation to do it, kind of show up and get it done, because ultimately, you know, you're going to get the benefit from from it for your own health and wellness and well-being and, and mental um, health benefits and all those kind of things. Mm. Um, but equally, I guess, if we think about it from from a, a workplace environment and a workplace mm -hmm. perspective you know companies want their employees to be fit and ready and able for work and kind of reducing absenteeism and all those sorts of things mm -hmm. and therefore you know workplace well-being and employee well-being is something that should be high on their list in terms of facilitating their employees the time and ability to be able to keep themselves well. Well, you know, and so of course I absolutely agree. Uh, you know this. <laughs> but I think what a lot of employees find is they make opportunities available and the uptake is is the becomes the problem. So the, you know, this is the conundrum that uh, and I know because I I was involved in a in a work in a workplace. Work that, you know, where I was teaching a, a free session, giving my time to, at a lunchtime for people to join me and do some moving in the middle of the working day. 
and uh, you know, and the uptake sadly is is not all that it could be. Um, and so, you know, this is the challenge: how do we make it something that people will engage with? And and I suppose, you know, in my previous life, I worked in health promotion in um, in Scotland, and so it's you know engaging with the people who who are going to be utilizing these services you know like anything if if we we can assume that we know what people need but by the same token if they're not turning up then clearly we, we've made a mistake in judging whatever it was so they do need to be engaged in this conversation around you know what kinds of opportunities would would they be interested in engaging with yeah, it's very individualistic, isn't it? Um, you know, I mean, that goes back to what we said earlier on about the fact that it's got to be something that you enjoy. Um, and, you know, for example, if what you enjoy is swimming, it's kind of difficult. <laughs> it's not, not the sort of thing that an employer, for example, can, pr can necessarily provide for you um, in terms of those facilities. But it's about making sure that people have the time, um, you know, to pursue movement or the exercise or the activities um within their within their life that um that that works for them yeah and i think now more than ever we've got this opportunity with uh, virtual experiences that people you know uh, can be online at home online in the office if they've got an office uh, space or even a communal kind of area when we're allowed to get together obviously uh, you know when that is <laughs> <laughs> you told me um, <laughs> you know I mean the, the the possibilities now my son was having online drumming lessons because he's teach well he has drum lessons and of course they couldn't meet uh, people have been doing online choirs online exercise online um, craft classes online just you know meeting with friends and having a quiz night so I mean these opportunities now and they're not it's not going to go away is it better that's going to be a feature moving forwards that people have opportunities to access much more readily uh, you know than having to nip out spend a whole 20 minutes driving somewhere you know so I think it is making that life easier in that regard to fit it in yeah, I mean, just, there was a lot of debate, wasn't there, in uh, sort of around the. I think I think probably the first lockdown that we went, that we went through, which is uh, coming up for twelve months ago now, um, mm -hmm. when the gyms first shut. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of a lot of people who have spent you know most of their time um, using the gym for their as their kind of chosen exercise, found other ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, they found these online classes that they were able to do, and they found ways that they could do it at home, you know, with using the household objects that they had around them and that kind of thing. And there was a lot of debate from a lot of people about whether they were actually going to renew their gym memberships and go back to the gym and go back into that environment again. Yeah. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, um, you know, over the months and years to come as things yeah. open up a little bit more. Well, and I think I think probably what we'll be looking at is a blended approach, which which is what what maybe with work as well. You know that this has opened a whole new way of working, um, and that a blended approach. Some days in the office, some days working from home. Uh, that might just lend itself to giving people. You know, if you don't have the commute uh, that you might do in a car normally, then. Perhaps that is an opportunity for you to take that time and um, and to engage with some physical activity. I guess the danger is that we, you know, those of us who are at home, oh, I'll just put the washing on, I'll empty the dishwasher out, and you get, get embroiled in tasks or uh, with children or whatever. So still it comes down to the idea of making making that part of every day, a day that without it you miss it uh without it you feel like the day wasn't quite right and it would be much better tomorrow that you do fit this in and maybe you know the occasional day obviously i kind of like uh, this 80 20 rule five days out of seven or 
you know, there's there's time to uh, to to for balance in all things. You know, if we can have have that, then all to the good. But um, you know, I think there are opportunities moving forwards uh, for people to engage with physical activity either in the home virtually uh, with with uh, videos or not uh, out of the home. Uh, maybe instead of a commute on a couple of days a week, you know, I think um, I think that's an opportunity. I suppose the challenges are for people who have physical jobs, which we haven't really touched upon. Um, you know, working hard in a physical job, your body is 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 more likely to feel fatigued. You're also more likely to crave energy energy dense foods, and actually, you're more likely to hang on to uh, hang on to fat because your body's going. Oh goodness gracious! I'm going to have to do that all over again tomorrow. <laughs> so, so your body's hanging on to the fat stores, and and so actually, you know, physical work. Although you you know we think oh they're all out in the fresh air getting uh, lots of exercise, they should be fit as a fiddle. That's not always the case, and uh, so you know the idea of just just being just right. You know what is what is it that's just right? moving enough but not too much yeah um well i mean the the, the world health organization issues guidelines doesn't it in terms of um um what you should do for for, for good health um mm. for adults aged uh, 18 to 64 they say that you should do at least um 150 to 300 minutes of moderate um activity a week mm. or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous activity a week um, yeah. as a minimum um, yeah. but ideally more than that to improve your health and for better health mm. so you know you've almost got a guideline there that you can use in terms of you know how much yeah 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 that that's well that's definitely uh, a, the, the 30 minutes a day for five days a week is your 150 isn't it and uh, yeah so 300 is double that i'm guessing <laughs> you know all <laughs> but yeah so but physical jobs clearly they, they, they may well be exceeding that on a regular basis um but you know i see lots of people with physical jobs who are not necessarily um a picture of health in my uh, you know in my in my work and so it's, you know, the nature of physical work, repetitive nature uh, of tasks, bending uh, down. Often, although people will invariably have had the correct manual handling training, quite often, uh, you know, they'll be doing it the quickest or easiest way. And that's not always the best way in which to, uh, to lug about a cement bag, say, for instance. So, uh, you know, so, so it is quite a challenge still for people with a physical job. I'm sure 300 minutes sounds like a rest to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things in there, really, isn't there? I think, I think one is that, um, and, and it's, not just, it's not just restricted to those with physical jobs, but very often, um, if you are phys physically active, whether it's in your job or whether you've, you've been out and, and done some activity, um, you can think about rewarding yourself and that you don't have to, to think about other aspects in terms of, you know, nutrition, that kind of thing, um, which um, will, you know, impact, you know, mm. kind of shape you're in and um, things like sleep. Um, mm. so, you know, if you're not if you're not nourishing your body effectively with sleep um, and getting the necessary rest and recovery, yeah. then the, the activity that you're doing isn't you know it isn't always necessarily fully beneficial it, it it can tip over to being a little bit harmful as well yeah well that's right that's absolutely right so you know we're back to the beginning which is uh everything in moderation <laughs> and that you know none of this none of this exists in a silo it, it it doesn't work on its own in the way that it would work together with with other measures as you say nutrition you know, is key. Nutrition is so key. Um, moving, moving is, uh, you know, a part of being human. 
It's something that we should do every day in an ideal world. And, you know, like you say, do something we love, do something we enjoy and that makes us feel uh, alive. Uh, but by the same token, we can't forget about the uh, the idea of what we put inside our bodies, how we fuel our bodies, and and the rest is the other side of that equation. Uh, you know that we need to rest and recuperate. The cellular repair takes a, a place when we rest, um, as does uh, you know this neurological regeneration um, consolidating your memories that occurs while we sleep so like I said to my son who's revising for a level mocks this week I said if you're on that phone until the minute that you drop off I said it really interferes with your brain's ability to consolidate memories but he, he didn't care one jot I have to say <laughs> <laughs> anyway. so yeah the blue light exposure I mean you know we could go on and on but uh, but moving more, eating well, getting plenty of rest. If if we can, you know, make strides in that direction, and that if our work work lives can in some way facilitate that happening, then all to the good, all to the good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think that 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 sums it up pretty well but uh yeah ultimately it, it it's up to it's up to us as individuals to do the right thing and take care of ourselves in the right way mm. and then we all stand to gain yeah, yeah absolutely okay well thank you nikki i think uh we you know we had a chat and uh and i hope some people will stand to uh learn some maybe some new information or just have a laugh at my stories so <laughs> Thank you again for your time. And uh, I'm sure that we'll be chatting again in the not too distant future. Thank you. No problem. I've enjoyed it. Thanks very much, Philip. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.